Because you know if you do not ask, you do not get, right? You cannot drive an action if you don't ask for an action. Your success is in direct correlation to the quantity of quality asks that you make in life. Full stop. Yet if you just run around asking for the things that you want in life, what are you? Pushy, obnoxious, sleazy, self-serving. If you take every moment of influence and you start curious until you understand context, dance towards a position of empathy so you see the world through their eyes, so it's you versus it as opposed to you versus them, and then have the courage to ask people to take big, bold actions, what are you now? Helpful, kind, consultative, caring on the same side. It really is that easy and that hard. So what is it we've learned so far? We've learned that if you do not ask, you do not get. We've learned that your success is in the direct correlation to the quantity of quality asks that you make in life. We should start curious until we reach empathy and then have the courage to make big, bold asks. We learned that we all have the ability to be able to sell stuff even from three years of age. Yet even knowing that if you do not ask, you do not get, and that your success is in direct correlation to the quantity of quality asks that you make in life, even knowing all of that, don't you still sometimes not ask for the things you know you would like? So play with me for a second. What are some of the big reasons why you don't ask for the things that you want in life? What stops you from asking? Rejection. Rejection. What else? I might get it and then have to do the work. Yeah, there's truth in that. OK, what else? Some form of no, another form of rejection, and some form of emotion attached to that, right? Some form of, like, fear. See, I can ask that question in any room anywhere in the world, and I always get any one of those three answers. It is either fear, it could be rejection, or often it's in fact fear of rejection. Those things combined. So I wonder if I can just reframe some thinking about this for a second and quickly hear who in this room has been rejected by somebody they care about in like the last seven days. It might have been you wanted to have Chinese food and they're like, I'm not into it. It might have been next vacation, I'd love to go here and they're like, are you kidding? And it might have been you wanted to have fun in the bedroom and they're not tonight, honey. I don't know what it was. You had one idea, they had a different idea, you got rejected and guess what? Life went on, right? No big deal. Isn't it funny in our personal life that we face rejection on repeat, on repeat, on repeat and more often than not, no big deal. Why is it in our personal life we accept rejection with such grace, yet in our business life we live so much constrained by this thought around rejection? What's the difference? Could be money. I think I know it cleaner than this. Could be ego. And the reason it's probably ego is in our personal lives we know with somewhere near great certainty they were not saying no to us, they were saying no to it. That's very different. In fact, they probably weren't even saying no to it, right? They were saying no to it right now. See, I know when my wife says no thank you to Chinese food, I am safe in the knowledge that spicy noodles, chicken and broccoli is still in my future. I know it. I'm not in doubt. I can make that happen for me. We'll get there back together someday. See, they're not saying no to it. They're saying no to it right now. What else do I know? Right? There's some form of love and emotion involved, perhaps. But I also know that people's circumstances are continually changing. Who in this room has spent money on something in the last three months they wouldn't have dreamed of buying three years ago? Probably somewhere like everybody. Why? Because your circumstances have changed. You're in the business of changing circumstances, correct? So stay front of mind to when those circumstances change in your favor. Because I tell you what, when Chinese food's the only option, we're all in. Right? We're all in. That's what we're eating. We're hungry. We're having it. So rejection is part of the game, but they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to it. What about fear? Is fear correct? Is fear real? Yeah, depends. I've seen people try and tell us that fear isn't real. I've seen corporate trainers do this on repeat, and they do things like they create an acronym out of it. Anybody seen this? We put it up on a flip chart. It's like an F and an E and an A and an R. And they say cute things like all that fear really is is it's false evidence appearing real. I've seen that a gazillion times. As often as I see it, I'm like, dang, that's cute. It's not how I've seen fear show up in my life at any given point. Yet what I see in this industry, both from advisors and clients when faced with fear, what I see from advisors and clients when faced with fear is I see F everything and run. 
Right, how do I not do this? How do I just go in the other direction? Why can't I go back to the way it used to be? That's what we see here. So we're going to learn how to be able to overcome that and understand that fear is part of the game. In fact, the only reason that you folks are in business is because fear exists, correct? Because if people weren't scared about the decisions that were attached towards the things that your business exists for, they'd figure it out by themselves. It would be free sailing. I mean, click to buy. Don't need you if I know what I'm doing. I only need you because I'm scared. Who in this room is really, really good at something today that once upon a time they were shit scared to try? Somewhere like most of us. Why? Hmm. Because we work through some form of fear. The fear fueled us. What I've learned fear to be is actually the fertilizer of growth. That's what fear is to me. It's the fertilizer of growth. If you're not doing something that scares you, you, my friends, ain't growing. And one of the greatest issues I see in America, particularly as an immigrant, is that um, too many people want to be too comfortable too early in life. And forget how much can happen is if you just push yourself a little further and push yourself a little further and get brave enough to try something you don't yet know how to do. That's where growth comes from. 